Hey guys, it's Stephanie here. I just wanted to give an update on my caterpillar problem. So I did a recent video about what's eating all of my leaves. I grew some seeds over winter in my greenhouse and I just put them in my ground for the cutting garden about, I guess it hasn't just been recently, maybe a month ago. And immediately as I put them down, all of my grasshoppers were eating all of my leaves. And in that video, I talked about how I was gonna let out my chickens because my chickens love to eat grasshoppers and normally every year I let them out and I did it this year because they've been very mischievous. They are on timeout for a good three months and so I had more grasshoppers than normal. So I let them out in that video and I said that was what I was gonna do but the chickens are back on their run and their little enclosure area that they can run around because immediately they started digging up six of my plants. They ruined one of my cutting flower cosmos and then my husband's garden boxes were just getting destroyed by them. They were just going nuts. And so they're back in the coop. So I kind of want to show you what I'm doing now. I've been thinking about what I could do. And I actually talked to a, a gardening friend. She's also my friend and she had a great suggestion that I'm going to tell you. Now I'm moving to plan B. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing. In that video, I did mention how I was going to use diatomaceous earth if this chicken thing didn't pan out, which it didn't. I kind of thought that might happen. My dahlias have been getting hammered the most. Right here, you can see that there is just no leaves left at all. I've gone ahead and I've just coated the heck out of my leaves with this diatomaceous earth. So I thought about bees and they don't typically pollinate in the evening. They kind of when the sun goes down, they're done. They kind of rest for the night because they've been busy going crazy pollinating flowers all day long. And then also the same thing is kind of with butterflies. I never noticed them at night. And so I thought if I put this diatomaceous earth on at night and kill a lot of those grasshoppers and get it under control so these plants can recover a little bit and then they get bigger and healthier and I don't have to worry so much about them. I'm gonna go ahead and coat the heck out of these leaves. And at this point, the leaves aren't using sunlight because it's shady and they've kind of stored up the photosynthesis for the day. And so I think this will be okay. I'll just have to make sure that in the morning I wash it off and then reapply it at night until I can get this situation under control. Um, I'm just gonna wash it off with the hose in the morning so it doesn't affect the bees and the butterflies. That's gonna be fairly early. <laughs> so I really want to have beautiful flowers. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now let's talk about what my neighbor was telling me about. So I was so excited when she told me about this. I'd never heard of it before. I hope it's okay, friend, <laughs> if I'm sharing this. I didn't know if you wanted to keep it a secret, but it's called Nolo Bait. You can't find it in stock this year. It's gonna be back in production next year. Apparently, grasshoppers are really attracted to it and it's organic, along with this diatomaceous earth, which is also organic. Um, they go and they eat it. It's some sort of bran. With this flaky wheat bran, it's covered with nosema spores. That's what it's called. And when the grasshoppers ingest it, they're infected with all these spores and then they die. So it's pretty cool. I'm gonna try that. I like that it's organic. I've already applied all of my diatomaceous earth, so I'm just gonna go around and show you what I've done. So in the bag comes this little container. I just filled it up with the diatomaceous earth, this side up. Basically all you do is squeeze it down. It's like one of those musical instruments. What do they call those? I'm blanking out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and spray like crazy. And that's all you gotta do is just push it down. <laughs> The zinnia is looking pretty awesome, but I'm just going to do it for extra safe measures tonight. It's evening time right now. It's about 7.30. The sun is going down. This is a good time to do it. I'm just going to go ahead and spray right there too. So it is messy. If you guys could see me right now, I have it all over myself. I put a heavy dose on my dahlias because it seems like every bug and insect loves dahlias. It's pretty much a vegetable for all of them, it feels like. So I don't know how this is gonna recover. I don't know, I've never had them get totally chomped down like this. So I dare you grasshoppers, come eat some of this diatomaceous earth on these leaves. <laughs> I'm hoping I can get a bunch of them killed tonight. I don't know, we'll find out, I guess. Right here, my snapdragons haven't been touched, so I really haven't had to do anything with those. My Chinese forget me not that one's been getting hammered pretty good, so I put a lot on there. They're still blooming despite the leaf struggles. <laughs> and then, there's my copper plume. So look at that leaf. I really enjoyed that one. And then my cup and saucer vine they're getting after. Once those get established and a little bit taller, those are really gonna take off, so I don't think I'll have a problem with those. They love the amaranth. See, look at that. And look at that one. And then my asters. My celosia haven't done much with that because they don't seem to care much for that. 
But as you can see right here, there's a bunch of buds starting to come out. So I want to make sure I wash this off before the bees start to try pollinate those. That's going to be really important because I do not want to harm any bees in this, in this process. And then you see my zinnias and the roses. I haven't had to do anything. All right. I hope you guys like this update. If you guys have any great ideas, comment down below. I would love to hear from you. And it also helps other people in the comment section. So I am definitely going to try that Nolo bait next year. I'm going to buy it the minute it's in stock so I can have it on hand and get it on the ground before I put any of these flowers in the ground. Another suggestion is you can also find the hot spots of your caterpillars and where they lay and hatch their eggs. That seems kind of tricky. I'm not exactly sure how to do that yet. I'm going to figure that out and then spray neem oil before they hatch and kill those eggs. And that's supposed to really help. So I'm going to try and do that in spring, get that null bait, and then we'll talk to you later. I'll give you an update to see how this diametaceous earth is doing and have a great day gardening. Consider subscribing and we'll talk to you later. Bye.